Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Strategic Command World War One, episode number two of our Central Powers playthrough. And uh, we're going to continue with our Schlieffen plan, which is probably what I'll title this episode. Just as a reminder to everyone that this is the historical route, or for people who haven't seen this series, they want to know what's, uh, they can just look at the episode title and know what I'm, what I'm doing in this, uh, in this whole series. We're pushing heavily into France through Belgium. That's the idea. Which we'll, we'll start to do. I mean, you can tell... Uh, one to two, that wasn't great. You can tell from... I guess we'll push this guy forward. You here. Got him. Yeah, so you can tell... So there's something different, right? <laughs> I'm no longer using the 3D sprites. I'm now using... Uh, I'm not using 3D units. I'm now using the 2D NATO counters. The other thing I did check is I turned on the quick animation for artificial intelligence so that when we uh, end up ending the turn, the AI will process their turn a little bit faster. I think it took a couple minutes last time. We'll speed that up a little bit, kind of ooh and ah over the different things. But so far we have ourselves a, a good start to this episode, I'd say. Um, I think I'll leave the seven. We want the seven to be a little bit less vulnerable. Probably both of these guys are going to stay where they are next turn and just reinforce because it's a little bit too weak. Now, what, how many points can we actually get out of Brussels? Eight points. And Ypres is almost none. So it's just, it's an alternate capital. So as soon as we take Brussels... Uh, or can we do this? Yeah, we can. <laughs> I might do that. So instead of moving this guy forward, I think I'll do something like this. And then I'll move this guy here. Okay, very good. So that's it. It makes sense to me because the seven would be a bit exposed if we moved him forward. So um, what's the plan here? I think I talked about it at the end of the last episode, but we're going to try to take Serbia. We're tr pushing very heavily through. I actually still even want to take some risks. See if we can eliminate a few more cores from the, the French front. If we can, it'd be very fortunate. Like, this unit is a little bit out of place. Look at the readiness and the morale are just terrible as well. Um, it is nice to have a few shells with our artillery. They can be used for defensive fire, which is pretty powerful. Um, we want to buy more artillery as soon as we can. And this episode, this turn, by the way, we have 386 points, so we're... We're actually doing very well as far as economy goes for Germany. Austria-Hungary, not so much, but that's okay. All right, so how do we want to manage this? We have this guy who can move forward. I think moving forward to here, first of all, I want to take this. This is 10 points. Um, it's also more NM value. You can see on the... You can click it, right? Yeah, there we go. 10 points. Supply, I think that is nice. It's generating supply points. Uh, and national morale value is 25. It's very hard for me to see. Let me just move this. The monitor has some stuff hanging from the top. But let's just take a look at the morales. Uh, UK is not really affected. France is actually doing great. Italy's untouched. Serbia is doing well. Russia is the lowest so far, but at 95%, basically still doing great. We're in great shape, and Austria-Hungary is at 96, so barely a smidge higher than, than Russia. So we should actually start lowering the French morale if we start taking you know, all these little places. So you can go there, and you can go there. I think we want to do that. I think we want to just push forward. Could actually even take that, but I want to. I want to weaken the BEF before before we advance on. So let's do this. Two and two. Well, it wasn't great, but that's okay. I, I, we're committed. I think at this point. So let's go ahead and push and three. Darn it. Those weren't the kind of numbers I was hoping for. Um, hmm. Do I want to get to Boulogne or do I want to just attack this unit? I think I'm just going to attack this unit. Okay, so it is still clear we could get there. Or we could do in two and two. I do. If there's a chance of us eliminating this unit, I want to do it. Ugh. Now he's out. Okay, we can still get to Boulogne though. I think we will do that. If you're wondering why I'm leaving Reims, it's because I have other infantry which can definitely get there. So I don't think at this point, if we move there, we're probably going to have like a two-on-two. -two. I, 
I, I don't even know if I can do this, undo this movement if I do it. So I, don't know, I might be committing myself to the attack. Please say I can undo. I cannot undo. Okay, well, we're not going to get to blown then. We're going to do this attack. A one-on-one. -on -one. That was just a terrible, terrible exchange. And worst of all, Blown remains unconquered, which I guess I probably can't even force march somebody over there. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. So now we just want to see who can get to Reams, who can do other funny stuff. I think this guy can get here. Now, I he'll be attacked, and in, I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not, but we will be holding the river, and that's something. Let's go ahead and do it. And one and two. Okay, let's just... Oh, this is cavalry. See, I didn't... Uh, I have a much harder time. My eyes are just not immediately identifying the difference between infantry and cavalry here. This would not be a good one at three and three. Although it's not worth it. He's not fortified in this direction. This guy is fortified in this direction, but I guess because it's cavalry. Let's do it. Two and... Yeah, okay, zero. That worked out extremely well. We want to filter some more people in. Probably one of them will go here, and the other one will go to Reams. We do want to defend Reams. In fact, we might even want... I, I guess none of them are going to be able to redeploy the entrenchment. So the way it works, I'm not entirely sure if it how the entrenchments fade when they stay and all that. But if um, you move another unit in, the entrenchment will remain there for the next turn. So if somebody digs a trench on one turn, and then they leave on the next turn, if somebody else comes in in that next turn, they can actually take advantage of the entrenchments, which, you know, of course makes sense. Doesn't mean, I mean, there's no reason why the entrenchment would just disappear. They don't fill in the trench when they leave, they just leave. So, I think that this is the best person to go here. I'm trying to see who has, like, the least range who can get into Reams. Oh, this is Calvary, which I don't want to misidentify. And you also cannot, yeah, you're not going to be able to get to anywhere interesting, really. Okay, so let's move. This guy can go there. This guy can't. Okay, let's just. We got it. At some point, we just got to commit. Let's do this. It's fine. And we'll move this guy. I think we do want to move him here. Because I don't expect that with this unit being here, he's the exposed unit, our southernmost. Having this one in the forest, and especially bordering Verdun. And I don't think people from Verdun are going to attack us because um, one is across the river and two. They do not want to lose their fortification. And I don't know if... I think that they do lose their fortification. Not their entrenchment, but their fortification if they attack. Now, I'm not sure about that. So let's go ahead and move here. Which will... Basically, we're setting up this... This, you know... This big Pac-Man. <laughs> we're trying to gobble up the... I know... I By the way, I know that... I call this the Maginot... I'm going to call this the Maginot line. This... The Maginot line wasn't made until the 30s. Uh, what isn't it? Isn't Maginot named after the French minister? But... That, uh, that's fine. I, I just would rather call it that than the Belfort, Epinal, Nancy, Verdun fortification line. So, you know, or the Verdun, Belfort fortification line, or anything. It, it, we all know, this it, is the Maginot line, right? <laughs> so please forgive me that I, I do call it that. Where else do we want to move some people? You can move up here. I think that is a good call for you. Let's move. So we have some units ready to attack next turn, because obviously some of our units, six, eight, seven, eight, seven. Getting a little bit worn down. We're seeing how far we can push before we the wheels come off the wagon. And I don't know if we need a person here. I probably want people more further west. So let's move this unit here. Now, we have some attacking we can do in the south as well. This unit is a bit exposed, and I'm willing to risk my... Oh, yeah. One and four. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's good. That's the good stuff right there. <clears throat> it's kind of a, you know, it's a cluster of foxtrot to, <laughs> to maneuver these guys around and get the next person out. <clears throat> How do I want to do that? It's uh, a good question. <laughs> because I think if you swap people, first of all, we can just hit H and see that the road, it should mean that this 7 and 9 can swap very easily. But if I actually swap, this 9 will be taken down to only... Uh, one action point, which I believe you should have more action points remaining. Maybe I just move this seven up to Luxembourg, since he can get there. <clears throat> now let's see, does this... Yeah, it only takes two to move in, so it probably takes one additional action point or something like that to swap. But I'd rather have the extra action points to move back out. 
Okay, four and one, this is perfect. And he can move out, this is perfect. I'm not even sure if I want to move him out because... Oh my gosh, wait. Oh, we did it. And the, oh, this is this cavalry, which is so low on strength, has actually done a great service to us. Shattered the enemy force, which was uh, in very had very low morale. So this is a great start. We've eliminated yet another French corps, and we're gonna be able to get our French, I mean our uh, German cavalry, out of here before they themselves are shattered. Where to move them? I don't know. They just need to sit somewhere for a turn. Probably it's better to move them up north, just because. Uh, we're going to be eventually moving everyone. I mean, you know, we need enough forces to be moving uh, around west to take advantage of the new land we're conquering over there. So the front is a little bit thin, is what I'm trying to say, but it was failing to say elegantly. And still we have, you know, the two deep. It looks like the lines are about two deep here. You know, three, but okay, we'll call this two, this two, two, two. Yeah, maybe two, two and a half deep. So we're in good shape on the on the Maginot line. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pause and let me just think about what to do next. Well, one interesting thing I noticed when I was trying to line up my next moves is down here, when I have an attack lined up, it says two to two, so that's what the results predict, but the interesting thing is that this two to two down there says HA, uh, sorry, let me just try to do this, there we go. HA equals four versus um, HA, HD equals three. And I believe that's supposed to stand for hard attack and hard defense. However, I don't know why it's hard attack and hard defense for everyone. You would imagine infantry would be soft. <laughs> Maybe it makes sense in a fort that they would have to use hard attack, but it doesn't make sense if it's in the mountains. Um, should be, I mean, this is soft and first soft, but I don't know. Um, I think what we're going to end up doing is attacking this unit. There's a few things I can move forward. So I can move this HQ forward over here. I want this cavalry to move all the way forward so we have a few more people ready to go next turn. Same thing with this infantry. They're both kind of in good position, so we'll move this guy forward. Um, this infant, uh, headquarters. I do have some people down south that, that I, it doesn't matter that much because... Uh, this guy's going to come back up. He's going to leave that area. He's not going to stay on the front with three strength. That's for darn sure. So I think we'll move this guy to here. And move this cavalry just at least back one. Although I don't want to do that quite yet because we'll lose our reconnaissance. And you know this basically just has some impact on what turns you or what kind of stuff you can undo. Since everyone's down here for you, we're... Oh, yeah, you're... That's a tough... That's a tough thing to figure out what to do here. Yeah, so this guy can basically kind of want to swap positions with these guys. We have two HQs. I mean, we have five HQs here. Do we need five HQs? Maybe. Maybe we do have that many people. All right, well, let's just make the gut call. Let's be a little bit aggressive here. I don't know if this is going to pay off. I guess I can do this attack, and that'll already tell me all I need to know. Two and two. It doesn't tell me anything, unfortunately. So let's do this. Three and three, okay. Well, I guess we're now at the point where we might as well just go for it. Ah, interesting. So he moved away. He took one damage and moved away. Um, did that go evenly for us or did that go better for us? I can't even remember. It was three and three, three or two and two here, three and three. Yeah, I guess it's not, it didn't go that well for us. It, it, we came out one strength better. So I think about this from the economy of replacing all those soldiers. Uh, unfortunately, replacing soldiers is a little bit worse for us because you can replace soldiers and they stay in place, right? But if I want to re replace soldiers and have my infantry move forward on the same turn, I can't do it. I have to choose one. So that's a little problematic. But it's, I mean, it's still nice that in some sense, at least, that we drove that guy out. I think I want these two to just reinforce and become uh, full tens. So we'll do that. Uh, they're going to take some experience loss for doing this, but um, it's going to be nice to have two tens. And I actually want to do this for the artillery, which is also going to save his shells this turn. And I, I'm just hoping... Experience loss is almost nothing, considering he has almost no experience you can see to start with. Uh, but. Oh, this is going to be very expensive. 
Wow, it's very expensive. I think we have to do it though. Okay, let me cancel this. I'll come back to do that. I wanna, let's, let's actually take our first real look at the research screen now that we have the points to do it. Without a doubt, I want to get infantry weapons going. I also wanna get production and technology going, which is gonna lower the cost of new units. Um, yeah. And I might even wanna get spying and intelligence going, but that's gonna leave us with not that many points remaining. So I, I guess I'm gonna hold off. Oh, mobility would also be quite good, which gives our unit, everybody will have one extra uh, movement point. The both, I think it says that, right? Each new level of mobility increases the action points of HQs, all infantry units, Marines. Um, when it says all infantry units, does it include cavalry, all types of artillery, and all armored unit types? It doesn't specifically mention cavalry, <laughs> so maybe cavalry is excluded. Honestly, it's not that big of a deal. The cavalry already have like a lot of movement. Six versus four. And this, if it didn't increase, it would make it five versus four. But infantry is going to be... We're not building any more, more cavalry. We're only going to be doing cores from here on in. So, okay. Well, I'm going to... In the next... One of my next pauses, I'll take a look at this. I think there's more to do here, but probably just shuffling around units. Let's go to the naval side. And what I know about the naval side, the reason why I strung my forces this far along... To begin with is I know that the enemy uh, the British normally send like their oh there it is uh, their ships over here so that's that's what I'm looking for that they usually send like two there's probably like another one down here somewhere so, oh, oh there it is oh, there it is uh, I probably should have only moved one at a time that was a little bit risky and they also send somebody over here uh, I guess I can scout with a light cruiser. Let's go over here. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. This is very aggressive. They moved, they moved much further than much further south than I expected. So th this is good. I think that there might be some more people in here. I've never seen them move more than three, but there might be some more people down here. The thing is, I don't really want to move that much further because the main fleet over in Portsmouth, it will react. I just basically want to attack... Oh, this is a dread. I thought this was DN for a second. I was like, oh, crap. I basically want to attack this thing and then retreat. So, unfortunately, the shock of seeing this has lowered the movement points. I'm actually going to come in with another Dreadnought and attack with that. Wow, seven. And uh, we did take one point of damage. I'm not going to move that guy quite yet. Um, I think I will move this guy here and just have him do his attack. And do we... Ah, we took the damage. Okay. I was hoping that we might be able to avoid the damage there. Um, sometimes when you kill a ship, you can't avoid the damage. Uh, this battle cruiser is going to have a hard time making it back. I think we're going to go ahead and use the Dreadnought first. Okay. It did take damage. Let's first see how the battle cruiser handles this. We haven't, no freebies so far, which is unfortunate, but, okay, so, I think I'll move my Dreadnought down here. The thing is, this fleet, I think it might be close enough. Let me try to pick somebody who hasn't moved yet. 17? Like, I think they can move 17. I don't want to sit here and count, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so they are in range to come after this guy, but if they do that, they will be in range they will not obviously not be able to move back. So I really don't know how the best what the best way of handling this is. Okay, first let's just take a, a shot at this guy. For a hey, finally we had one unit that did not take damage in return. Uh, I think it, I, I, it might actually be time. For our light cruisers to go. Well, we have one battleship, and I don't plan to reinforce these battleships. Oh, nice. That was good. <coughs> Reason is, we have very few points to spend, and just no sense in spending them on... Yes, very good. Oh, wow, that was bad. <laughs> that was bad in the end. It was a two for two, a light cruiser versus a destroyer. 
Well, okay, well, very unfortunate, but... So what I want to do is put the submarine as a defensive force. I think I'll put the submarine as a defensive force here. So hopefully that will be enough that if they do, if they send something which is not a destroyer first, we should be able to, I guess I can guard our, that's better if I do this. Okay, so if they send something which is not a destroyer, um, our submarine will get a first strike in, which is great. Everyone else up here, you're kind of on your own, unfortunately. <laughs> I guess I can move this battleship back a bit, but it, I, it's probably better for him to defend this other battleship. I don't know. Uh, and then we probably won't repair this. And you know what? Honestly, I, I probably even want to move some of our naval stuff going on here. Now, they typically lay mines right here. I think it's already right here. I thought it was right here. Okay, naval mines. What? 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 I didn't run into it. Um, how do you sweep mines? <laughs> I guess I'll just deploy mines myself. I didn't even realize I could do that, but let's deploy them here. Okay, and here, sure, why not? <laughs> Take that, you fiends. Yeah, you want to play mines? I'll play mines. Now, my submarine can still move. I don't really know where the best place is. There's usually some ships in here. So it's kind of hard. What are you supposed to use to scout if not destroyers? I would have thought that destroyers would be reasonable scouts. Um. Okay, well, I guess we'll just blockade this port with our two cruisers. Like so. And that should be good enough. This submarine, honestly, this submarine is probably best in the Northern Sea. So I'm gonna go ahead and move her all the way back. We can maybe do some blockading. I don't know, we'll figure it out, but I, I prefer her over towards the West. This destroyer, I guess, I mean, there's no point in having a ship just sitting at home. I, I don't, I can't see the use in that. Hey, if they can mine stuff, I guess we can just go ahead. Well, do we have any destroyers? Yeah, we have. We have plenty of destroyers over here. So yeah, let's send this guy out to the east. And he'll start laying mines next turn, I guess. Okay, well, um, that's good. I think that's all that we can do for this naval. Oh, no, 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 we actually have... Uh-huh. So we can lay mines. Can we lay mines? Can we lay mines off of the enemy coast? Um, 11, how many, what's your total movement? 18. I just need to make sure you can get out of here. <laughs> Let's see if I can lay a mine here. You only have one action point left. Okay, we're just gonna do... No! Undo! No, Control-Z did not want you to move, wanted you not... Uh, well, bummer. Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna write this destroyer off as dead. Maybe, if we're lucky, if they approach... From this hex, they'll hit the naval mine first, and then we'll have our dreadnoughts in position to counterattack. Okay, maybe, maybe it's not the worst thing. This um, unit, I, I want to actually operate this guy. So you can do strategic redeployment along railroads. It's pretty costly, 18 movement points, or sorry, points, economic points. But I want him to go down here, and I actually don't want him to do that yet because it's time for us to get to the Serbian situation. So let me see real fast. All right, let's... um. Let's move. I, I, it looks like we can attack this guy, the Belgrade unit. If we can eliminate him, that would be great. First and foremost, though, I want to kill this Velyevo unit. Okay, that was okay. That was mediocre. Let's get this guy to follow up. One and one. Okay, one and three. Got him. Oh, gosh. Why is it so bad? One and three is not supposed to be two and three. <laughs> okay, that's fine. We will, we will persevere. Uh, I guess we'll move this guy back down here. Two to one? No, I don't think so. I might as well move this guy out of the way. And move this guy... Well, we can move somebody else in first. So this is a one to two. Let's do that. What the hell? That was not a one and two. That was a two and one. One and three. Okay, that was a one and three. At least... Hey, I'll take the just... 
Give me exactly what you say you're going to give me, and I will not complain. And this is now one and two. Good. And I think we can kill that unit then. Yeah. And we can move in. Let's move in. Hooray! We took Belgrade. Fantastic. So that's going to be what, just good for us, bad for the Serbian morale. In every way, good. <laughs> it's a good thing. Now, I don't think we need this unit to stay here against the front. These guys have reinforced the Montenegro forces. So I actually want this guy to come around and move back. And I'm going to pull this guy out of Pola, the very fortified area. It's also a big port. Um, and we're going to move him down, and he's going to guard Ragusa. I don't think they're going to do anything, but I don't think that Italy's going to join the war very soon either. So we might as well get this guy to the front, get him to be effective. Now I can operate that unit that's way over here. And we can move them all the way over here. Where do we want them? I think it's about the same, honestly. Get them here. So he will not be part of the headquarters because it's German and Austro-Hungarian. There's a difference, but... But taking that, pushing a little bit further, we're slowly making progress. And we're probably going to have to spend a turn at some point just to reinforce all of our wounded units. But... In the meantime, I, I, I don't think we need to reinforce 9s or 10s, definitely not 10s. So we have two 10s and two 9s, which can probably aggressively attack this unit, the 2nd Army Corps of Serbia. So that is our, that's, okay, that's the uh, Serbian land combat, but now we have the Austro-Hungarian Navy, which is going to be funny. Um, I think that the Dreadnought should be around here somewhere. We're just going to slowly move back, oh, found them. I did not do any damage, but that's fine. So we want to go, and we actually do want to attack this guy. Let's go here. Did we do any damage? I didn't see anything happening. I moved this guy as far back as possible. Um, I think our Dreadnought has to go next, honestly. Okay, we should kill it and only take five. Uh, only take four. Yes! Yes! And we only took three! Oh, fantastic! And now what we really need to do is guard our wounded um, cruiser. I thought this was actually a battleship. Oh, it is an armored cruiser. It's the Kaiser Carl VI. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do to guard this is... We're actually also blockading. I didn't see this. This red line, which did not exist, exist last turn, is a supply line from France. So they're feeding the, the Serbians some points. But we can just blockade that. Now, the Austro-Hungarian uh, economy is in tatters, It's <laughs> compared to the German one, at least. So we really can't afford to repair these ships. I'm just trying to win a few, extra, a few little battles here and there, um, wherever I can, really. And I think what we're going to do is move this Dreadnought here and move this submarine here as a defensive measure to basically protect these guys. Uh, which means I won't leave... I, I know, you know what? I do want to leave port, though, because... I want to blockade this group, so let's move this guy here, this guy here, this guy here, and I'll even move the destroyer out just to make sure we really blockade this area. I mean, this looks like a blockade to me, the, literally, <laughs> just so many people on this line. Hopefully we stop those points from getting to Serbia because uh, we really don't want those points to get there. Actually, I think they're helping the Montenegrins, but maybe that they're all using the same um, points. Okay, so so far we've done all the naval stuff we want to do, and we've done Serbia, we've, I, I'll have to look over the west coast, uh, west front to see if there's anything more I want to do there. So the last thing I think we need to do is just deal with Russia, which is not just a just, it's a big just. Last time I actually made a bit of a mistake. I didn't move my force, uh, I had an infantry here and I moved him up here, it's this one, the 22nd Corps, Austro-Hungarian Corps. Should have moved him into Cernowitz, so we lost that, and it's really nothing. It's not a whole lot of points that we're giving up. I think it's just two. Uh, still, it's two that we didn't need to lose, and the Austro-Hungarian economy, as I already mentioned, is not, not in amazing shape. So what I think we'll do is we'll attack into Tarnopol here. We may even be able to take Tarnopol back if we're lucky, but I'm just going to get this guy to attack here. Ooh, good. Did five damage for one, and then I'm going to perfect move him back down, so at least we stop the bleeding. So I think... 
there is at least one unit here. There, there's tons of units that spawn in in between turn one and two, or no, at uh, between my first turn and their first turn over here. Um, I've made I learned that because Proskurov. I made the mistake of sending the infantry unit down here over to Proskurov before, and then he got overrun completely dead one turn. So our main objective is to make sure we take the or hold forever if if we can at all the uh, Galician oil field. But getting huge casualties like this is also a secondary priority. If we can eliminate things altogether, that's huge. So that's I think that's still a big success story. Um, we need to see what who can make it to Tarnopol. This guy, no, okay, nobody can. Is a two to four worth it? Well, the one thing we can ask ourselves is if we, once we do this two to four, can we move into Tarnopol? And I think the answer is yes. So let's do this attack. Hopefully it's wildly successful. Three and one. Okay, that's that's actually not that bad. And then we'll move into Tarnopol and we will continue the defense uh, that it looks like was already there from our previous <laughs> attempt. And we can kind of shift people in this manner over. Um, do we want this guy to stay entrenched here? He's got an entrenchment of two, so he's looking quite good. I might move this guy over and have him attack instead. One to three, two, and zero. Okay, that's actually perfect because I really don't want to lose the Galician oil fields. So it's I, I will even accept if we get less kills. I mean, Odin too, if you're not losing anybody, you're doing really good. And they're going to come next turn. They're going to bring it. So if we can... Again, if we can, if at all possible, we really want to push as many Russian units back. We want to give them even other targets of opportunity. Because if they focus on this guy by himself, especially because we did this shuffle over to Tarnopol, he's probably not going to make it. We need another unit here. I think we have to move this guy forward. So he's going to lose his, you know, but how important is, oh, well, Lemberg is actually really important. It's 12 points and 30 uh, national morale. This is 15 national morale, but, and 20 points. So it's still more important, and I honestly think that this is a bigger stretch for them. We can move more units in from this side. Yeah, I think we're gonna do it. We're just gonna take take the risk here. Two to three, two to two, damn it. Not the best, but this guy basically, we gotta keep him there, unfortunately. Um, or maybe we can move cavalry there. So if he's there, he's helping to defend against Galician oil field. If nothing else, he's preventing units who want to move in and out because he's, you know, projecting his zone of control a little bit further. Same with these both flanking units means that they can only move here and here to attack one. And that means that they're just able to, there's less infantry which should be able to get there going through all the zones of control. And I think honestly, we're just going to sacrifice this cavalry to do this attack. Uh, that was unexpected. Okay, we're making some big blunders here. We're going to do it. You had it all, Tortuga, and you just gave it up. Ay, ay, ay. We, we also have this problem that we don't actually want to give up Tarnow or any of these places. Uh, okay, you can get to Krakow, so you can move. This is cavalry. We're, we're defending with whatever we have at this point. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is not good. Yeah, we can't do anything. We did weaken this unit, so he's not going to be able to attack the Galicians, but look at one, two, three. That guy's not going to be useful for... They probably have four units which can attack, so we just have to hope that our ten, with reasonable readiness, decent morale, can hold out against... I'm sure it's going to be a an onslaught. Or maybe they'll focus on this unit, which he's weaker and he's probably less in, you know, less entrenched. So he's also vulnerable from the south. Is that true? H, one, two, three. Oh, yeah, he's vulnerable, vulnerable from the south. So that eight could attack very easily and cause some havoc. I think we'll move this guy into Stanislaw just to keep him closer and, you know, even just to defend the city itself. It's a means, right? I'll move this guy forward, and we'll have this guy move over to Sandbar. So we're kind of covering some places. Um, I think I'll have this guy move over here so that hopefully next turn... I guess it's better to have him move along the front, so we'll move him here. These guys are all going to stay where they are. We should have some good success. So yeah, one to five. This should be good. Four. And, uh, was not as successful as I was hoping. 
Okay, that was good. We'll just move this guy back. He's not, you know, in a good defensive position, but he'll get back to pose in next turn. And I'm sure there's no way for them to circumvent him and get around. That's one of the things I'm a little worried about with this unit. I think we'll do this attack. It's only a one-to-one, -one and... Did not go as well as I was hoping. <laughs> I don't know what we'll do with this unit. Okay, well, let's just keep moving around the horn here. I think most of this is done. We've made some mistakes. Things haven't gone perfectly. This 2-4 to four is very tempting. I don't know how we're going to end up doing this. Um, what, what does this attack even mean? Okay, let's just do this. This guy has readiness of 78% and morale of 90. What will this do? And experience of 60. So 60, 78, 90. Sixty, seventy, six, eighty-eight. Oh, it actually did something. Wow. I didn't know that these aircraft recon they're basically like um artillery then, I guess. Okay, that that was that was not that bad. I don't think it's gonna make any meaningful difference. Two percent out of well, I mean it's two percent. So should we do this attack? I guess we should. There's two schools of thought. Wow, this unit has very good morale. We could just stay entrenched here. We have a pretty good defensive position. Or we could just go for it. I, I mean, this unit has been very successful defending. So that said, how's this? And this unit is... Should be entrenching. Okay, Johannesburg. We'll just let that guy entrench. That's fine. Is, is this a useful attack? A two and three. Because we could do this attack and then swap places. I think we'll do that. Four and it's not I mean it's not the worst it's just worse than I expected two to three three to four is closer to one one which is bad do the swap one to two come on please two two no ah bummer well I kind of stand by what we did because we're gonna take the pressure off our northern unit and these are gonna be much harder to breach not only are they on a river but they're entrenched on that river which is quite good. So we'll leave this as it is. Allenstein's gonna be like a f impenetrable fort by the time they even sniff around there. I think our turn is done, so let's just look at research now. What else do we have? Um, by the way, I probably, you know what, first I'm actually gonna go through and see if anybody else needs reinforcement, if we need any to do anything else, and I'll kind of ponder my research options. I'll make sure that we didn't miss any movement, and then I'll bring us back in. Okay, well, um, I did a couple movements. I like moved this unit here. This one was here and it moved here. And the, the one that was here is this guy. He moved down here. Uh, it's just minor things like that. And I looked at the research. I also think that we should move this Marine guy. I'm just going to move him closer to the front. I don't really know why or what. <laughs> just don't have anything better for him to do. And there's no reason to operate a, a five-strength guy. So, um... Yeah, his, his guy's kind of just doing his own thing, I guess. Move him down here. Uh, okay, so let's get to the research side of things. There's 124 points left for Germany, and I'm actually not going to spend them on research. I'm going to go ahead and bring this guy, this artillery, up to full strength. I don't know how big of a difference that makes, but if you're ever going to do it, now is the right time, right? So, let's do it. We're committing. We can't do any other research now, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to get the elite reinforcements on our 18th core here, and I'm also going to get this Metz, if I can afford it, which I think I just can, you get bring this guy up to full strength, and that's a drop of, well, it's a pretty significant drop, but he'll be fighting at full strength, and I think that's, well, I mean, you can see that's really all we can do for this turn. I'm going to leave the 10 down here. I, I don't really think... The only thing we might want to do is move this guy up a little bit. Strasbourg, it turns out. And uh, these guys as well will move up. No, not that guy. This guy, move here. This guy... Ooh, actually, we might want to swap these two. Oh, you're off? No, I don't want to do that. Swap back. <laughs> okay, very good. So now let's just look at the research for Austro, for Austria-Hungary. 
They can do this, infantry weapons, and one thing that's interesting is the trench warfare costs 60 for them, and it only costs 50 for the Germans. I'm not really sure what to make of that. Um, one of the things I really want to get for the Germans, by the way, is increased shell production. I can imagine that artillery is going to be very important for Germany, um, especially if we do end up in a slog over on the west. Although we've out, we're off to a very positive start there, I, I still feel. I might take the infantry warfare with the Austro-Hungarians because they have enough research for it and does increase morale, which I believe is an issue. In fact, the Germans already have two levels in this, and they, oh, when? They have two levels in the command and control as well, and they, <laughs> Austria-Hungary has zero. So let's go ahead and get infantry warfare for these guys. And that is probably going to wrap up our turn. So the only thing left to do is to see... Oh god, is to see how the <laughs> how the enemy reacts. We have a lot of questions. Are we going to hold down here? What are they going to do in response to our aggression on the, the west front? But I think we're in pretty good shape. So hopefully you're not screaming at me that there's something I'm missing. I really wish we could have taken Boulogne, but that's fine. Let's end the turn and see what happens. French morale falls due to the loss of Lille. Not too surprising. In fact, too bad we didn't get blown. And we celebrate the capture of Brussels. Serbian morale falls due to the loss of Belgrade. Fantastic. Serbia moves government to Nish. Okay. You can see that the Russians appear to be pouring in. And they moved theirs to Antwerp. Okay. Russia appears to be pouring in supplies to Serbia through Nish. Um, we can choose to improve the Ottoman army. They're short on money. And then they get an HQ. Now, an HQ is like 225. This is 200 total. It not only does that, it also brings the Ottomans closer to the central powers. So we'll say yes. Uh, the next one is this Poland. This gives a Polish detachment, which is only cost 75. It costs us 60, which is not too bad. I think we'll take it because... Austria-Hungary is really in dire straits. The negative side of that is... Oh, Bulgaria takes an increase in interest in events in Serbia. Fantastic. That's a good thing for us. We just want to keep Romania from having an interest. Uh, so that the downside of that event is that it's supposed to destabilize Austria-Hungary a little bit later. Looks like the Gobin has arrived against Constantinople. Okay, good. French mobilization continues. What does that mean? Okay, we even get a big picture for it. Siberian, Siberian and Turkestan units arrived in Moscow. Not good. The Russian front is the one that's the most tenuous right now. And German mobilization continues. Yes. Oh. Okay, good. Three, four, five, six. Wow, okay. That was, that was significant. Oh, thank goodness. Please mobilize, Austria Hungary. Please mobilize. Two units there. Probably the Russians are mobilizing as well. Okay, so we got 360 from all that. That's not bad. And Austria-Hungary got 241. We probably could feed some of our German funds into Austria-Hungary, but I think Germany's going to carry the brunt of the fighting, so they may even need their points. The Ottomans are just basically collecting little, little tidbits here and there. But they're not in the fighting yet, so it doesn't matter. It's kind of like playing in the United States before they enter World War II. So Lord Kitchener is issued a call to arms. Makes sense. I fear for our naval destroyer that's near the channel. So they didn't... They didn't... What happened? Oh, God. What is happening? I have no idea. Oh, wow. That was great. That was not... What? Holy cow! Their battle cruiser just killed my dreadnought. So somebody ran into naval mines. I think that's the Ru Russians, but we're not <laughs> we're not watching it. <laughs> Maybe it was the British. Okay, that was a three. No, that was not good. Three to two. They had a core enter balloon. Oh my! Gosh, I really could have eliminated that if I just taken Balone. Oh, that's so frustrating. Oh, that's rough. That thing just appears out of nowhere. 
Oh, that's so frustrating. I, it doesn't even make sense that they could just spawn a core. Unless they move that somehow. I don't know what happened. It looks like there's rain. More naval mines going on. <laughs> we can't see what's going on, but apparently this naval mine was has, is doing a lot of work. I don't know why they didn't encounter it when the destroyer moved next to it. How do they... Like, how do they see it, but I can't. I really don't know how the mines thing works, so... And why is the naval mine still there? When I ran into theirs, it disappeared. Huh. I'm left with many questions. And even though this is, you know, supposed to be processing quicker, I don't really feel that it is. Three to three. I'm okay with that. Uh, one to four is great. It's good, good. Uh, one to two, that's not great. Okay, one to four, that's what I'm talking about. One to three, very good. So we did the right thing by leaving this guy, not attacking with him. Okay, three to two, not good. Let me contact. Four to zero, that's fantastic. Two to zero, that's very good. Okay, two to three, not good. Yikes. Can they get him? I think they can. One to three, still good. Wow, one to two. Okay, that's good. That's very positive. Just a two. Two to... Okay, one to two. That was good for them. Okay, zero to two. That's good for us. And they're entrenching. We saved it. We saved Galicia. One more turn. They are coming in. Oh, they still have more forces. Oh my gosh. This is... I'm. This is like... I'm hanging at the edge of my seat. <laughs> Oh, this is this is intense. I don't know why my submarine isn't attacking people. When they move by, you gotta attack them. Probably out of torpedoes. Okay, the game is hanging again. I'm glad I left. I, I don't want this video to go 50 minutes for crying out loud. It takes forever to do one single turn. Even with the pauses. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. Are they gonna attack? I'm just getting a whole lot of mouse waiting <laughs> the spinning wheel of death oh my god I don't think either of those units actually are created if you take Balone so this is so frustrating that's right our mobilization central raider disrupt France Serbia oh very good very happy to see that Entente naval units north of Scotland blockade imports to Germany. Okay, so they're going to start doing some naval... Entente naval grounds import... And blockade imports to... Okay. Oh, at the North Sea. Japan declares war on the Central Powers. You guys aren't even in this. So New Zealand sends an expeditionary force to seize German Samoa. You jerks. Well, that should be it. There it is. Looks like it's going to be our turn again. And, uh, wow, I, I really can't wait to record the next episode of this. So we lost our Viribius Unitas Dreadnought, which is unfortunate. Lots of things happened. But they're going to tell us that we need to watch out. But then we can also blockade them. Blockades either way. And that's fine. And here we are. <clears throat> so we're going to call this video to a close here. It's been a really exciting turn. Um... I am, the, the worst thing that happened is that I did not take Balone and these two units, which would not have spawned, did spawn. So, and wow, the, the British completely reinforced their unit, which was down to, I think, two. So that's lots of bad news, but we'll figure out a way to bounce back. And at least the, the least we can say is that we've done pretty well to push this far. And we'll see how much further we can go in the next episode. So for now, thanks for watching. And until the next one, take care.